What if? A special look at how the cost of living crisis Securing somewhere new to live Finding a place to live here Impossible Is not easy We made the housing crisis Go into debt as soon as she turns on the heating Damn, mould My eviction I guess In The Sims Welcome to The Sims 4 for Rent Expansion Pack Review, where I give an in-depth look at all of the aspects of the brand new expansion pack and at the very end, tell you whether this pack is worth it or not. Don't worry, babe. I'll do all the thinking for you. Create a Sim. Create a Sim comes with what I'd say is a decent number of new items. Given the pack is based around South Asian culture, all of the clothing items aptly fit the theme. Whilst the idea of paying for cultural representation is definitely ick-worthy, as we all wait for our turn to get shot in the Russian roulette of representation. I survived. Your turn? Oh, okay. My turn? Oh, I survived. Your turn? My turn? Nearly a decade of emotional torment from this game has taught me to shut the fuck up and be grateful for whatever morsels I am given. The items are really cute, unless you're a feminine figure attempting to try on these fucking pants. Why are you stood like that? But it was a little bit disappointing to see only one hair type represented in this pack. Oh, and men can go fuck themselves, I guess, but that's normal. Overall, the clothes are cute. Build buy mode. Buy mode comes with a substantial amount of new Southeast Asian inspired items. I really don't have much to complain about here. The meshes are gorgeous, new windows and fences are beautiful, and there's such a large variety of colors. Like, seriously, the Sims team really outdid themselves with the number of swatches for each item. My only real complaint is that there weren't a lot of wall decorations. Paintings were severely lacking in this pack to the point where I really struggled to properly cover a wall while sticking to the Tamarang theme, but that's literally my only complaint. Also, so as a Middle Eastern, it's really great to see the standing toilet make an appearance because I even grew up with that. Seriously, these items are great. Tomarang. The Sims 4 for rent. <laughs> Why is it called that? Sorry, sorry, I'll get to the world in a second, but the Sims 4 for rent? The Sims 4 for? Did they not think? Did they not like say it out loud? This is amazing. The Sims 44 rent comes with the brand new world of Tomarang. Created to be the Sims version of Thailand, I have to admit this is one of the most beautiful worlds I have ever seen in the Sims franchise, hands down. Hands down, I am begging for more lots. Tell me why this is an expansion pack, but it comes with the same amount of lots as Tartosa, which came in a game pack. Debatable, actually. That aside, I genuinely believe Tomarang is a world to rival even Sulani in beauty. The ambiance of local birds, the beautiful set drop of South Asian buildings, the gorgeous lights of the night district. I felt so at peace traversing this world, even if there was nothing to do. But that's a gameplay problem more than anything. Speaking of gameplay. The Sims 44 rent costs $34.99 for a total of 1.46 gigabytes. As always, expansion packs have a steep asking price. So we're gonna go through my personal experience with the pack and at the very end, I'll give you guys my honest and objective answer on whether this pack is worth it or not. And let me just say before we begin, I know that my review is a lot later than everybody else's, but I genuinely believe that you cannot review a pack without playing it for a substantial amount of time. And by the time this review comes out, I'll have played this pack for nearly 20 hours. I think that's a fair amount of time, right? Right? I haven't seen another human being in so long. So to try out this pack, I've once again rocked up my old D&D character, Maple, who recently moved to Tomarang and is trying to live a normal life as a humble little tenant. In 44 Rent, you can buy a new type of building called a residential rental. Now, don't get it confused with apartments from City Living or apartments from Eco Lifestyle. Those are different because we say they are. Each rental comes with a daily rent price, which gets paid at the end of the week. So not daily, a lease length, and a set of rules that you have to abide by. Or else it's homelessness for you, bucko. Panic that I somehow had to cough up 65 simoleons a day, Maple tried to get a pack appropriate job. And I had assumed there weren't any new jobs in this pack, but I was wrong. There's a new part-time job called the handyman and I didn't see it until like 10 hours in. It's just a fucking rabbit hole though, so go figure. When I first moved in, I got to meet my landlord who lived right above me. And for some reason, she just didn't want to leave. Even when I asked her to, I'm like five seconds in and landlord abuse is already rife in Tomarang. Points for realism, I guess. I also suddenly had a massive influx of random townies from Sulani coming to my door. Like, I have no idea why. Luckily, you can now disallow certain people from knocking at your door, ranging from solicitors to vampires. Finally! Fuck you, you anemic-looking, blood-sucking, ugly-cucking, eyebrow-plucking, 
I noticed there was like a little shrine outside my apartment. You can leave fruit and incense out, but other than that, it doesn't do anything. Just like Maple, because she's unemployed. In this quaint neighborhood, there's a gorgeous temple not too far from May's apartment. Finally, we get to experience some beautiful South Asian culture and customs and get to learn more about, oh, it's a rabbit hole. Okay, fuck me, I guess. Didn't The Sims 4 forsake a Sims 3 open world so we didn't have to have rabbit holes? What happened to that? Did we just collectively decide to give up on that? Oh, but at least there's a pop-up telling me how cool and poggers this temple is. That definitely makes me feel better. Maple is now hungry. So she went and took a stroll around the night markets to get some food. The atmosphere and the lighting in this area is gorgeous, but there's not much to do. You can get some food, of which there are only a few options. It says here in my notes that I took while I was playing that I should insert joke about white girl eating spicy food. So there you oh, have it. It's kind of like the city living markets, but permanent and worse. It also felt so eerily empty. When I think about food and wares markets, I imagine large crowds, the bustle of people talking over each other, smoke, smells, and sounds drifting from all corners of the market. But uh, yeah, this is cool too, I guess. There's also a fish market, which is weird because the only thing that you can buy here is fish, not rabbit, but they made it a rabbit hole. Also, because I remembered to pre-order the pack this time, I got this food cart. Unfortunately, despite its appearance, it's just a grill. You can't actually make your own food stall and you can't sell the food that you make. I guess that would make this pack void. Missed opportunity. This upset me, so I decided to go upstairs and complain to my landlord. Now, instead of just knocking on people's doors like a regular fucking human being, you can finally break into people's homes. It's a timed event, so you gotta get in, do what you gotta do, and get out before you get caught. Instead of stealing things, I like to take random shits in people's bedrooms. Ah. Speaking of stank, the moment I complained to my landlord, she had a stank ass attitude the entire day. So, Maple decided to let the intrusive thoughts win and go through her landlord's shit with the brand new snooping interaction. With this, you can find secrets and use those secrets to blackmail other sims for cold hard cash. Unfortunately, in my entire 20 hours of playing with this pack, not once was I able to use the blackmail interaction. No matter what I did, no matter how many guides I looked up, this interaction just never showed up for me. So I took a shit in a different bedroom. Being a tenant isn't all fun and games though. I mean, it never was. I'm a slave to the housing crisis. Sometimes you will be faced with property problems that need to get solved. At some point, my flat randomly became overrun with garbage. Don't ask me how because I literally didn't do anything to produce any waste. I make sure to do that in somebody else's bedroom. So I called my landlord and she immediately came over to fix the problem. I'd give her kudos for a good response time, but she lives literally just upstairs. And instead of fixing the problem, she decided to sit in my fucking living room and watch TV for several hours. So I complained to her and she still did nothing. So I tried cleaning it up myself and for some reason, not all the garbage spawned on my lot so I couldn't finish the event. Instead, I had to pay for garbage collection out of my own pocket to come and do it for me. Luckily, my landlord did compensate me, but not entirely. <laughs> so I still lost fucking money. So I tried to complain again, but the game was like, no, you complained too recently. Fuck me, I guess. This pack also comes with two brand new social events. The first is a pool party, which I don't really need to explain to you guys. And the second is the neighborhood potluck. This was such a cute idea where Sims come over with food that they've already cooked and everybody gets to have a dinner party with lovely food variety. But I wish it was better in practice. Guests immediately came in and within seconds, they all start eating. They don't even wait for you to call to meal. No one eats at the same time. Certain guests were refusing to eat and then they started to fucking gather in my bedroom and start dancing even though there was no music. And this is where the lag really started to hit me as well, even though I had like less than 10 guests over. But I'll get into the lag issues a little bit later on. Editing Sarah here. Mold is also a new feature in this pack, but for some reason, when I was trying to get footage, it never spawned for me. Instead, when I played my at-home save, which I didn't record, it would profusely begin spawning for me, even though I didn't have the moldy lot trait on. And it ruined my entire save. I don't have visual proof, unfortunately, but I tweeted about it. And ghosts kept spawning into my house, and random animals kept coming into my house, and I couldn't make them go away. No, seriously, townies would not stop randomly dying. Please don't ask me why, because I don't know. I am not kidding when I say it ruined my save. And this was all too depressing, so I decided to be on the winning team instead. So I became the landlord. 
decided to play as a young Nancy Landgrab. You know, before the botched nose job and the awful breast implant. She decided to temporarily move to Tomarang to look after her housing monopoly overseas. Which is why I purchased every single rental lot in Tomarang. When owning a property, you can decorate it as you see fit and implement rules like no social events, no pets, no ghosts, no bitches. By the way, shout out to Lil Simsy for building so many rental properties to stick in my world. The actual goat. Filling the vacancies, however, kinda sucked. You can only fill the vacancies from your home lot. So yeah, another loading screen. And you can't copy and paste rules for all of your rentals, so you have to manually set them unit by unit. And I kept clicking on the wrong button and traveling to the lot, and then I had to go back from the lot to go home to fill the vacancy, so I'm already sitting through two fucking loading screens. And my experience as a landlord was uh, not great. Nancy would go to check up on her tenants, but mostly just to eavesdrop on them and go through their things. Again, I had the intention of blackmailing them for money, but that interaction just never showed up for me. As a landlord, you can do a thorough inspection of the rental property, checking and fixing appliances, but I decided to harass my tenants instead, just for fun. The tenant that lived the next door down just loved watching the fights. He didn't have a care in the world. The annoying thing is, even if I walked just two feet to check in on my other unit, I was met with another loading screen. And I know why they did this. The game already struggles to run as it is, and loading five different households at once would absolutely destroy Sims action cues. But I don't know, I feel like if you're playing as the landlord, it should just load up the entire property. Regardless, I just loved walking into people's units and eating their food. I'm part of the family now, because I own you. But overall, I didn't find being a landlord to be that fun. So I ended up just leaving my game unpaused to see if anything interesting or fun would happen. I don't like testing the packs out like this. I like to play it as I normally would and let the gameplay come naturally to me. But the game was suffering with some pretty intense lag spikes. And yeah, I don't have the poggest gaming setup, but I was able to run the game flawlessly until this pack was released. And there isn't much to do in Tomarang anyway. In fact, my sims were constantly low on their fun need because there was just nothing to do. Eventually, I got the notification that one of my properties was haunted. So another loading screen ensued and I found the ghost, yelled at them, and it went away. That's it. Because I had successfully solved a problem, the value of my unit went up, which means it's worth more. So I did what any good landlord would do and evicted the elderly couple immediately and rented the unit to somebody else for three times the original value. And then it was back to leaving the game unpaused again. What else is there? Oh, there's an animal sanctuary. I was so excited to see what adorable animals they had, but oh, rabbit hole. You can adopt a tiger? Oh, meta metaphorically, of course. <sighs> Is the pack worth it or not? I haven't been this excited about an expansion pack in a very long time. The gameplay trailers really made this pack look promising. And despite its gorgeous world, the gorgeous items, the exciting new lot type, I was severely disappointed. But I don't think it's not worth it because it truly depends on what you want from this pack. If you're a gameplay gal like me, I'd say give this pack a hard pass. The lag spikes made this very difficult to play. <laughs> delay between me deleting this wall and the wall going away. Most of the events don't work. Hell, an entire gameplay aspect just didn't show up for me at all. There's really not much to do both as a tenant and as a landlord. It would be more worth your money to just pick up city living or even dine out if you're keen on living in an apartment or just micromanaging a business. But there's an appeal to this pack that I do believe people will find value in. And that's if you're a builder. It's not really my cup of tea, but I can just imagine how satisfying it is to build your own rental properties, stick them in any of the worlds, and actually watch people move in and make it their homes. That is what I believe the true aspect of this pack is. Alongside some fresh new cultural representation, there is some value to be had here. But even then, I cannot wholeheartedly recommend this pack, at least not right now, because I found that the worst lag I ever experienced with this pack was in build by mode. The game just cannot handle multi-unit residentials. I thought it was my computer at first, but even other Sims 
creators have confirmed it as well. It had me like bordering on being close to tears because it was bordering on unplayable. I already think that Sims packs are way too expensive for what they are. And regardless of the gameplay this pack really lacks, especially for the asking price, I at least expected this pack to work as intended. I get that the Sims team probably wanted this pack out in time for the holiday season, but they really should have just taken their time to iron out the bugs and performance issues first. So unless you're an avid builder or you're just looking for some much needed representation, just don't get this one.